Hi, welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Rick. And I'm Sarah. And today we're going to tell you about another uh, one of our travels. Um, it was recently a big birthday for me. And but rather than travel in March when my birthday is and the weather's nasty, um, we delayed and Rick arranged a really nice trip uh, to Montreal with some exciting stuff. So we wanted to share that with you today. Yeah, most of this is going to be covered in the show notes and as well as the blog post that accompanying this. So traveling in March is not always a fun thing. Uh, so we postponed it until June, at first expecting to take her to Montreal for the Mondial de la Beer, but that's always a hectic time to find a room, uh, especially if uh, Le Grand Prix is going on in Montreal at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we opted for a couple of weeks later, uh, what ended up being uh, St. John the Baptist Day, a big national festival in Quebec, and mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of things going on. Yeah, Bon St. Jean, uh, as they say there. Yeah, there was a lot going on. Um, so we first hit up a uh, yarn store called Espace Tricot. We've got some beautiful yarns um, there and mostly timed it so that we could go to the uh, knitting hour. They have like a clinic, um, but it's also sort of a drop in and just hang out and knit thing. So Rick was nice enough to arrange that for me. And uh, like I said, it was really sweet. Everybody was really nice. Um, we got to meet a couple of the uh, staffers, regular staffers there. And I picked up some beautiful linen yarn, um, which is their house brand um, that they have made overseas uh, in a lovely neutral color. And I also got some um, really beautiful hand dyed yarn from a Quebec uh, dyer. Um, that's I just, I just love the colors in this yarn. So is that correct that they said it's not they're not much for sheep in uh, Canada and especially in Quebec, uh, but they do have people who process and dye and do other things with yarn, but it's not something like say Scotland or even Vermont where we might have a lot of sheep and have a lot of uh, raw wool materials. Right. Yeah. They were. I was asking for local wool that was grown in the region, and they said there just aren't very many sheep farms there, but they do have a lot of people who do hand dyeing. Um, and what I liked about this yarn that I got was it also, it's also something called Eco Wash, which is more friendly than, or environmentally friendly than um, Super Wash, which is a, a trademark technique for making yarn uh, washable in the washing machine. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to knitting that up. Um, and then the rest of our tour was kind of uh, beer and food focused, which was not a bad thing. Um, so uh, the first day we set out, and we're actually gonna taste a beer from a place we couldn't go. Um, because we were setting out in the morning, we had some nice pastries, and then we, we did a nice long walk downtown. Um, and based on, in part by the, um, the guys from the BAOS podcast, hi guys, if you're watching, um, <laughs> we tried to go to Espace Publique, um, which is a, a, a brew pub, but they weren't open until the afternoon, so um, we sort of went over there and pouted for a minute and <laughs> regrouped um, and then continued on our way. But let's try let's try their beer. Yeah, so we're going to try, uh, this is a blind tasting. We, neither of us have actually had any of uh, Espace Publique's beer before. So this is our first time and we have a nice uh, hoppy uh, sour. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is here. Uh, beer du Real, uh, Chez Blanc. And it, uh, we're excited about this. So we're going to do a little taste right here. Yep. As Rick said, um, this is a sour beer, and I hadn't quite realized that they were basically known for sours. Um, so this is not outside of what they normally do. It's kind of their bread and butter, but this is a hoppy sour beer. Yeah, and it's a great time of year for a sour color. beer. Sour beers are excellent on in warm weather. Um, mm -hmm. So it's one of those things that like sours and mm -hmm. saisons and things are really refreshing in hot days. And you may not be able to tell from this, but we're in the middle of what... Vermont heat wave where it is near 90 degrees and expected to get to 100 Fahrenheit in the next couple of days. So sours really do help oh. quench your thirst Ooh. as well as enjoy the... Ooh, that is nice. It almost has a, a little bit of a Saison smell to it. Yeah, and a maybe Centennial. I'm not sure mm. what yeast they're using, but uh, maybe a Centennial. Centennial Lovely hops, hop. you mean? Yes, yeah. Centennial hop, which I think is quite popular in uh, Canada. I know it's certainly one of the ones that they... Uh, they grow themselves. Mm -hmm. so, give me a second. Mm. Interesting. Mm. It mm. is a bit pucker worthy. I like that though because it's sour and then it kind of goes away or changes a little yeah. bit on the tongue. It's not just like drinking lemon juice. Yeah, so you've got um, most of the hops on the nose, but you're right. It's got yeah. a nice sour grapefruit almost. The, I don't drink a lot of sour beer because I think a lot of them are just way too sour for me. They do taste like pure lemon juice. Yeah, she's like me. a. 
Um, <laughs> and I've never liked sour. You know, I don't like sour candy. I don't drink a lot of lemonade and stuff like that. So, um, but this is nice. This is it's refreshing. Refreshing. <laughs> To me, the test of a good sour beer is if I would drink a whole one by myself. Mm -hmm. um, I think I could. Yeah. So I have to jump ahead. We were lucky enough that we weren't, because we weren't able to stop a Espace Public um, at the actual brew uh, pub, we were able to find a local convenience store that had a really great selection of uh, mm -hmm. Quebec beers. And uh, luckily, they had these in four-pack cans. So we made yeah. sure we grabbed one today. So we were able to try it until we can get there next visit. Exactly. We'll plan a little better next time. Um, so after that, we did a, you know, we bun a bunch of touring around. Um, Rick wrote up a really detailed report, so you can find all the places we ate and drank and did all the stuff. Um, I did want to, though, to briefly touch on Pit Caribou, which was another uh, pub, or, uh, well, I guess it's a pub that's there representing their brewery, which is not in downtown Montreal. Um, but it's a pub that serves their beers and, and occasionally has guest taps. And we wandered in there about midday. I guess they had just opened and there was hardly anybody else in the place. Um, and had some other sour beers, or at least I did. I uh, had a, a Goza that was um, just absolutely wonderful. It's probably one of the best best Gozas I've ever had. Yeah, Again, I, I don't drink a ton of them, but I like that salty, salty, tangy combination. Yeah, it was great. It was a fruit beer. It had a really lovely uh, pink purple color, and it was it was again, you know, mm -hmm. really nice, really nice sour, mm -hmm. um, really refreshing. And um, yeah, this, the, the as Sarah said, there was nobody else in the pubs, which is actually a great time to visit a pub if you're interested in beer because it really gives you a chance to speak with whether it's the brewer or the pubman. Uh, or the barman, you get to speak with them, and you get a lot of you get to really kind of learn more about the the brewery. So we had a really engaged barman who was telling us about all the different beers, making suggestions, and he suggested that beer for Sarah. I had another uh, sour IPA mm -hmm. that again was quite refreshing. It's not something I normally would have ordered. And thanks to his mm -hmm. recommendation, I really enjoyed that as well. Yeah, that was a hoppy IPA. And we actually found a bottle of that to bring back um, later on on our trip. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to enjoy that again. Yeah, so follow us on uh, Instagram if you're not already. We will post some of those as we crack mm -hmm. them open. We're trying to be strategic about those beers so we don't go through them too quickly. <laughs> eat them out. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. eating them out every once in a while. And... Uh, we also had a recent visit from some friends uh, who are brewers from uh, the UK, and they brought us some beers as well. So thankfully, we have more strategic beer reserves to mm -hmm. get us through that so we don't drink all of our Quebecois beers at once. Although we might drink a few more of the Quebecois because we did walk away with more sours than we usually have in our cabinet. And like Rick yeah. said, this upcoming week is going to be punishing on the temperatures. Yeah. Um, so we'll we space these out during the summer and yeah. some of the darker ones we'll save for our winter con yeah. consumption. So, so Instagram at Gage Hill Crafts and also you're on Untapped. I'm not on there, but if you want Rick's uh, kind of ratings and look at his notes, what's your Untapped handle? Um, it's actually in the show notes you're going to be able to read. I put that at the very bottom uh, with the Instagram link as well as the Untapped link. Um, I don't do this. I, I kind of like familiar with the BAO guys. I'm not about reviewing. I'm not about knocking people down. It's mostly a way for me to keep track of things, uh, refer to them, and make some notes so mm -hmm. that I can either, well, either for one of these uh, podcasts or for a future, if there was something I was interested in, to if I looked for it at, at say, a, a convenience store or a beer shop, I want to be able to reference that. So Right. What was that beer we had at that place three weeks ago? Oh, yeah, it was this. Did, yeah. I, did I like that? Mm, it was okay. I didn't like it as much. Okay, I'm not going to buy that. Or, oh, yeah, I definitely want to order that again. Right, yeah. exactly. So feel free to follow me. Mm -hmm. so oftentimes, these are a collaboration as well. You're gonna. It, I didn't drink all of the beers that you're going to see <laughs> from our trip to Montreal. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> well, exactly, a little bit. But I did uh, take advantage of Sarah's generosity with her beers uh, to be able to maximize the number of beers that I got to taste. So I didn't need to get a 12, 16, 20-ounce mm -hmm. pint or something in order to uh, taste that and well and make my notes for it. So you're going to see right. a lot of beers that we reviewed or that I mentioned and took notes on and untapped. So please give me a follow and uh, make uh, you know there's a way to leave comments as well. So if you've had a particular beer that I had, uh, great, and I'll follow you back and hopefully we'll find some common. Beers. Yeah, it's always nice to discover what other people are drinking, especially with so many different new beers on the market. I feel like the breweries, both in Vermont and in Montreal, are 
you know, they're releasing a lot of different, there's all new styles on the market now, all these milkshake things and different flavor combinations that usually you would have in, in two separate beers and now they're blending things together. And so, yeah, yeah there's a lot out there. Um, another brewery that we went to that we have tried before that we really liked is um, the White Horse. Uh, Chabot Blanc. Right. Um, I was blanking on my French there for a second. <laughs> it's right around the corner from where we like to stay. So it's a great, you know, either start of day, end of day kind of thing. One more one more half uh, around the corner mm-hmm. kind of thing. And they have really like funky decor. Um, and they have two or three beers that they always have. They're flagship beers. There's like a blonde uh, and a couple of others. And then they usually do a s- several seasonal ones. So they have some sours on. They had a Goza, they had, I'm trying to think of what I had. I think I had a stout there, milk stout, and something else. Um, but we enjoy, if, if you're ever in town, definitely check out Cheval Blanc. The milk stout that she's referring to, she actually had at Les Reservoirs. Oh, never mind. But that's okay. <laughs> that's another place we like to go, yeah. I remember this a little more because I did spend a great deal of time making the show notes that there's going to be make up this blog post. It is quite long and kind of detailed. Um, but that's why we do this. Again, that's why I take notes and untap. That's why I make these blog entries because it's a reference. It's a way to return to something and find out you know, where what I enjoyed, what mm-hmm. I didn't necessarily yeah. enjoy. Uh, but we did have a number of lovely beers at Cheval Blanc as we were killing time before our dinner. That's right. Yep. Um, and what, what did you have there? Uh, the Cheval Blanc, yeah. I actually would have to refer to my show notes <laughs> well, as well because I'm drawing a blank as well. A red... Uh, well, I was going to try something else that was a little bit bigger, and the barmaid did a great job of suggesting something else that was a little lot, uh, lighter. I, too, believe it was a saison, mm-hmm. um, but I'd have to check my own show notes. But, yeah, it was early in the evening. We knew we were going to go out. I wasn't looking for anything too heavy. I wanted something that was light. It was not nearly as hot as it is here, but it was certainly sunny. Um, mm-hmm. So we had a couple of beers there, and then we made our way over to Le Plateau, uh, it's a Prince Arthur is the name of the road. It's a great little walk street that they mm-hmm. have closed off to traffic, and um, lots of open air restaurants in the summertime. Which we've often gone there in the winter, and so at, on the rare occasion we've gone in the summer, I feel like oh, it's a whole other city, and there's all this other stuff going on, and yeah. you just don't see in the winter time. Right. So yeah, there was a massive Greek restaurant. They probably had sixty tables outside. We didn't eat there, but it looked really good. It looked like people were enjoying themselves. Yeah, and so great. There's buskers out there making so mm-hmm. you have their built in entertainment. Uh, music going, the people watching is just a wonderful experience to uh, take in that culture. Uh, they, this part of the French culture that comes through in the Quebecois, yeah. French Canadian culture, translate very well from what you're going to find in Paris, which is the buildings, the restaurants, the bars have these these windows that open up and you're right on the street. And it's just really fun to mm-hmm. people watch while you're eating and drinking and yep. take in the culture. And of course, outside you can bring your dog to dinner too. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of people with their pets. Um, so yeah, we had a really nice French style meal. Um, and then the next day, again, we did that long tromp where we <laughs> went by these guys and uh, we had some, oh, we had great um, noodles for lunch. That was brilliant. Um, can't get can't get noodles like that in Vermont. Uh, at least I haven't found a place where you can get um, ramen, custom ramen to go or or for sit down. So we yeah, I don't have a lot of ex- like a long lunch there. Right. Um, yeah, I don't have really a lot nice. of experience with ramen. Sarah mm-hmm. has a little bit more experience with ramen than I did. Um, but our friend Rich from OffBeatEats.org. Uh, that, again, is also in the show notes, and I uh, made a suggestion. It was a place that he hadn't been yet, but was on his hit list, so to speak, um, and he recommended it, and the name of the place is in the show notes, so click through. But it was a make-your-own. It was a little checkbox. I'd like this. I'd like it vegetarian. I'd like it with pork belly. I'd like it with uh, heat. I'd like it with an egg, and you just make the check marks, give it mm-hmm. to that, the really helpful, polite staff. You know, it came very quickly. That's one thing. Don't be afraid if you don't have a lot of uh, capacity for the French language in Montreal. They appreciate that you try. You're saying hello when you enter shops. Uh, but they could quickly switch. Uh, most people in the service industry can quickly switch between French and English. And mm-hmm. I really admire that. And it's really helpful. They they just they are so welcoming. It's a great place to go to eat and drink because the service industry is so polite. They are. They're really helpful. And something that I noticed, especially this trip, is that if you happen to be with a friend or with someone and you're talking in a specific language, then if they pick up on that, like as you're coming in the door, they'll immediately 
pick up on that and greet you in that language and give you the menu in that language, which is very helpful. Um, so that they don't even put you in that awkward position of going, uh, English, please. Um, so yeah, so that's a nice one. <laughs> I, I found that uh, I don't, I've actually never taken French, don't speak any French, but I am cursed with the ability to be able to pronounce things relatively well. You mimic, you mimic a good accent. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Then they start speaking to you in rapid fire. So I will say bonjour, bonsoir, and rather than saying bonjour, bonsoir, you know, make it because they, ah, that's not a, a French speaker. That's somebody I probably should speak to in English, but yep. they're really welcoming and very fun. Mm -hmm. Yep. So again, Rick's detailed um, more of our kind of play by play of our days, but. Um, we didn't mention the name of the restaurant. So the restaurant on Friday night was a great place. Uh, Les Du uh, Garmin, I think it's the two children, two child. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, but it's a oh, wonderful French yeah. restaurant. Mm -hmm. We had some traditional French foods that, again, is in there, but it was mm -hmm. a really fun night. Yeah, and the noodle place, I have no idea what that was called. That's okay. It's in there. Again, and it's <laughs> in the show notes for a reason. Also, just to make sure you read the show notes. Right. And then Sunday, we we had this tradition, and we, we carried it on, but we didn't carry on in the same neighborhood. So we always go to a nice brunch, and then we go get our treats and our goodies and our beer to take back. So we went to... Um, a, a great brunch place mm -hmm. and oh yeah it was in that hotel right, right um and i was a little worried about it at first quite frankly because i saw these huge platters of food coming out and in most american restaurants when you have a you know a platter of breakfast that you're supposed to eat that's this big it's not going to be very good it's going to be a lot of not very good food um but this was definitely an exception i had a, a bagel with a vegetarian benedict so it had um, it had the egg, but it had, you know, pesto and sun-dried tomatoes and all these amazing things. And then beautiful fresh fruit and potatoes to go with it. And you got something similar. You had a salmon Yeah, I had something. the, the, mm -hmm. the uh, eggs benedict with the smoked salmon, and it too came with some wonderful sides. And, you know, this was like 9 o'clock in the morning, and we did not have another meal, a full meal, until like 7 o'clock in the evening once we got home. Didn't need it, yeah. Yeah, it was just quite filling. Um... And that's, that's it's great. So that, yeah, Sunday we did that. We went over back to the same uh, patisserie, mm -hmm. boulangerie that we went to before. Uh, it was all organic flour. Mm -hmm. um, it was very important to them to trace the source of their flour and to make sure that it was organic always. And it really showed through and really polite little uh, staff in this little place. And it was right around the corner from our hotel. So uh, yeah. we're going to definitely visit there again. Oh, yeah. And then, as Sarah said, part of our other routine is our last step is to always stock up on beer. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead, Sarah. Yes, yeah, so we went to this uh, convenience store. We actually went to a whole series of them. They're, they're almost every block, and they're always independently owned. Um, so, no two are alike. They, they sort of remind me of, um, what's that word in, in, in New York City? Bodegas? Bodegas. They kind of remind me of that. Sure. You know, you can go in, you, can, you might be able to get a hot meal, mm -hmm. maybe not. Um... You can get, you know, convenience things, personal toiletry items, that kind of stuff. Um, and then sometimes they have like a specialty, like one will have more of a green grocer section and then the next one will have more of a wine section. Yeah. Um, they always kind of fill in the need of their local right. community. And apologies again for my French. The way I understand it is in the, the French Canadian, they call it a dépanneur, which is also the same one that they word that they may use for a tow truck. So it's like right. you have an emergency, you go to the depreneur, you're yeah. going to get the things you need. If you're in need, yes. this is the place to go. Yeah. If you're in need of something, yeah. So Sarah alluded to when we were walking around, she was peeking in, in every single one of the depreneurs. Does this one have good beer? Does this one yeah. have good beer? And I was like, thought she was like kind of rolling my eyes. This is taking time. But it really paid off because uh, we took a long walk that was really outside of our comfort area. And she peeked into this one place. We went inside. It looked like a traditional convenience store. You got your mm -hmm. potato chips, your cold drinks. But then you go around back, and it was this beautiful beer cave of all Quebecois beers. It opened up, and there were like four aisles of beer plus coolers all the way around the periphery. Yeah. It was amazing. So I had, you know, the classic stuff we have to get every time, like did a CL, um, but then a bunch of other stuff. And, yeah. and what I noticed there, too, because um, you were talking about the organic pastries mm -hmm. that there was just a lot more organic stuff in general more organic produce more organic things on menus a more organic beer in the beer store um which was not the case a few years ago i remember distinctly going to the farmer's market and being disappointed that there wasn't very much organic produce or organic cheese mm -hmm. um but the organic thing seems to have come around 
Um, they're big on kombucha now. I've seen a bunch of places that, that offer kombucha or, or, you know, offer bottled kombucha. Um, and then, yeah, organic beer and then more and more Quebecois beer. So um, we may have some mini reviews or something like some 20 second reviews on Instagram. We'll see um, how that goes uh, as we get, get through some more of those beers that we bought. But um, it was really just nice to see a huge selection and to have a great excuse to try some new stuff. Uh, yeah. And it's hard to believe that all this entire trip was essentially 48 hours, mm -hmm. not including the travel time. So we arrived at noon on Friday. We left on noon on Sunday. And you'll see from the uh, the blog post that we packed a great deal in there, walked mm -hmm. everywhere, left our car at the hotel. They have a wonderful infrastructure as far as their public transportation is concerned. There's buses. There's the underground metro. Um, and they're wonderful. But you really don't need to. It's, yeah, you unless can you're walk going anywhere. a lot, like one end of the city of, up to the other, yeah. you really don't need that. Even from our hotel, which is kind of near McGill, we can easily walk to the Botanical Garden, say, which is kind of on the other side of town. Yeah, we're actually right between McGill mm -hmm. and the Botanical Gardens. Mm -hmm. um, we're right on the edge of Les Plateaux, and you're right on the edge of uh, Gay Village and a lot of these other up-and-coming neighborhoods. And that was a big part of what we wanted to do this time, get out of our rut and go and explore other parts of Montreal. That's another thing that's in the blog post. I've started a map that is our Montreal. So the places that we went to this trip, as well as some other places that we've gone over the other six or seven times we've been there, they're mapped out and you can find them. So hopefully you'll mm -hmm. find that very useful. Yeah, we get a lot of questions like, hey, what do you recommend? And we often just send links to different blog posts we've done. So, so do check that out. Um, again, if you're in New England, it's a really quick drive. For us, we're halfway between Montreal and Boston, and it's an easy choice. Sorry, Boston, but <laughs> unless there's a Red Sox game on, um, it's an easy choice to go up there. Well, it's, so it's less different. traffic, too. It really That's is. That's true, you know, yeah. You know, it's the, easier to get to. Right. Also. We take the bus. We take the Dartmouth coach often if we're going to be going down to Boston for, mm -hmm. like you said, for a Red Sox game, etc. Mm -hmm. because the traffic to Boston is quite horrible <laughs> um, it's a wonderful city it's great you know go Sox but the the trip to Montreal is on the way up it's very easy to to accommodate and it's a you know the beautiful rolling hills and farmlands and you're really going at a regular pace and yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's we're lucky to have it so close by as we've said in other of our, our travel blogs or travel videos you know there's a lot to do here in Vermont but we're really lucky to have short distances to travel to go to these other wonderful places. Cult around us. Other cultural centers, yeah, and centers for beer. So on that note, I just want to say cheers. Cheers. And I hope you guys get to take some good summer trips uh, wherever you might be headed and get some nice beverages of your choice. So. And if you've been to Montreal, please leave us some comments either here mm -hmm. on the YouTube channel or on the website. Mm -hmm. If you have some places you think we should explore or beers that we should explore, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. So subscribe Absolutely. to the channel. Um, click on the bell to get alerted when new uh, episodes are available. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah, cheers. <laughs>